So we're here at the European Parliament in Brussels. Uh, we just had a discussion about the upcoming Russian parliamentary elections, which will be held on the 18th of September of this year. My name is Vladimir Karamorza. I'm the national coordinator of the Open Russia Movement and the deputy leader of the People's Freedom Party, an opposition party in Russia. Uh, and I'm joined here by uh, Rebecca Harms, MEP, president of the Green Group in the European Parliament, an MEP from Germany, uh, and by my colleague from Russia, Vadim Prokhorov, who is an independent member of the Expert Council of the Central Electoral Commission of Russia and one of the foremost experts on uh, electoral law uh, in the Russian Federation. And so I think the first uh, area I'd like to address uh, is the context, the conditions for this upcoming parliamentary elections. For more than 16 years, uh, uh, not since March 2000, has a Russian election been assessed as free and fair by international observers. So for the last 16 years, every single national election in Russia, be it parliamentary or presidential, was assessed by OSCE and Council of Europe observers as not free and not fair. And I think given the way the preparations are going for this year's election, this year will not be an exception. So I'd like to ask Vadim uh, what in his view are the major problems uh, and major barriers currently with regard to the election process in Russia. Yeah, you're quite right. Uh, it's, uh, it seems to me that uh, there are serious problems uh, concerned with the uh, degradation of uh, our Russian electoral law, electoral law, no doubt. But at the same time, I'm uh, absolutely sure that the main problem, the, the main challenge is uh, the uh, absolutely unequal access of our parties, uh, at the first place opposition parties, to the uh, mass media and at the first time to the uh, main TV ch main uh, Russian TV channels. Uh, I could only describe that uh, it's absolutely unequal situation and uh, the opposition parties and opposition actors, activists, uh, practically has no any access to the TV channels, uh, just only pro-government uh, parties and actors. So it's, uh, it's not an, uh, a really normal situation, it's necessary to improve. And it seems to me that one of the uh, maybe efforts uh, in this direction, it, it's possible to use the help of uh, international uh, observers, but at the same time I'm absolutely sure that uh, the role of the short-time observers who uh, come to the elections uh, in the, at the voting day and maybe a couple days before it or after that is not, is not so high, and, uh, but at the same time, at the same time, the fact that they uh, present at the, uh, at the country the, in this period, in the voting day, uh, led to the powers of the country declare that the, uh, these elections are free, fair and so on. I'm absolutely sure that only long-time observers could play an important role, long time, I mean all the period of the electoral campaign, about three months period, they could play a real role to help uh, uh, to develop, uh, in development of Russian democracy and uh, at the same time to pay attention to the un absolutely unequal uh, excess of the political parties to the main TV channels and to the main mass media in uh, Russia. Thank you very much. And on this very point of international observation and even more broadly international attention uh, to the Russian elections, Mr. Putin and Mr. Lavrov like to say, don't interfere into our internal affairs. This is their favorite uh, phrase that they always say to Western leaders. But of course, as we know, uh, this is not true. And human rights and election standards are not internal affairs. Mm -hmm. Russia is a member of the Council of Europe. Russia is a member of the OSCE. Uh, and uh, the standards with regard to free and fair elections are in fact our international obligations under, for instance, the OEC Copenhagen document, under the European Convention of Human Rights and Protocol No. 1 that guarantees the right to free and fair elections. So we're here in the European Parliament and I wanted to ask you, uh, Ms. Harms, what attention will be paid by our friends and neighbours in Europe to the upcoming Russian election? So we have not yet decided uh, how we are going to deal with the uh, observation missions, uh, whether we support uh, OSCE long-term observation um, or um, direct electoral process observation. Um, it has to be carefully decided um, because also uh, the risks uh, you right now hear uh, from uh, Vadim. Um, I think uh, for us in the European Union, uh, it's um, a major concern uh, that uh, the so-called managed democracy in Russia is not a true democratic uh, system. Um, and we have the experience since annexation of Crimea and uh, the uh, interference, the distortion 
uh, of uh, the democratic process in uh, Ukraine, also by a military intervention in, uh, in, 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 in Donbas, uh, we have the experience uh, that uh, this um, managed democracy uh, in Russia poses also threats uh, to European security. So therefore, we have, um, I would say, a double interest in democratic development uh, in Russia. We cannot achieve it. It can be achieved only by the Russian citizens uh, themselves. But a true democratic uh, development would be better, not only for Russian citizens, but uh, for the whole of uh, the European Union, for this continent. And this means uh, that uh, we must follow uh, these upcoming elections. Um, so it's obvious uh, they will not be free and fair, but it should be also in our interest that as many uh, opposition candidates as possible have access to the ballot and uh, may show interesting results and may show in the end uh, that uh, there is another Russia really interested in democracy. Thank you very much for the comments. And on exactly on this point, I just wanted to briefly say that there has been an ongoing debate uh, in the Russian democratic opposition of whether to even participate in this electoral process, because we know that it's not free. We know that it's not fair. Uh, many opposition leaders are disqualified from the ballot. There is unequal media access, as Vadim just said. There are restrictions on observers and so on and so forth. This is not going to be a free and fair election. But we have decided against a boycott, because yeah. boycotts don't change anything. They are meaningless. We have to use every opportunity uh, in order to get our message across, to challenge this regime and to present our alternative vision for a free, democratic and European Russia. And this is what we will be doing in this election because we know that there are millions of people in Russia who do not accept the current regime, do not accept its corruption, its autocracy, its international isolationism and want to see a Russia based on the rule of law, democracy and European values. And it is to those people that we will give a political voice by participating uh, in this election in September.